Matt here with Walden Glove. Today we're talking catcher's mitt. Uh, I was a catcher myself back in the Little League days. Uh, that was about as high as I went catching, but uh, I still love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. And your real catchers will all know that a, a properly broken in and game ready catcher's mitt is gonna change your life out on the field and hopefully change your teams as well. So we wanna steal more strikes. We want a glove that's really loud, a glove that's popping, making our pitchers sound like they're throwing 100 miles an hour. And we really want a, a mitt that fits the way we wanna catch it. Um, and we want something that's gonna let us control the ball. So here's a brand new mitt. This is a, a Glove Lab mitt. Uh, this is a really popular shape right now. I know there's a lot of even pro ball guys that, that like these AZ Glove Lab catcher's mitts. Uh, they're kind of a cult favorite. Um, has a really good shape. So the only thing for me is my hands aren't super huge. So I kind of have some you know medium sized hands here. I'm, you know, unless I pull this pinky loop super tight, I've got a lot of space here, I've got a lot of space here, and even in, in the wrist itself, I've got a lot of space. So for me, I'm gonna shift, do the same thing, I'm gonna shift this over, and I'm gonna put two in with the third right next to it. And that kind of puts my hand on a little bit different angle, that gives me a little bit more leverage, and that's kind of gonna put me, you know, from this angle to more like this angle, and for me, that's how I like to, to receive because I'm trying to catch the ball right in the middle of the glove, maybe middle bottom, little down here. Um, I don't like my pocket being too close to the web. I feel like it's harder to control the ball and sometimes you get balls that squirt up into the web. Luckily, this, this mitt has a really good web shape too. You can see our, our angle here. Even balls that pop up in, they're gonna fall back in to the pocket, so into the middle of the mint. So let me set this up real quick, and then we'll be back. So once I've been wearing the glove a little bit, I've kind of got it figured out how I wanna wear it, as far as where I wanna put my fingers, how tight I want my wrist. The first step of the break-in, in my opinion, and you know, other people have different processes, but I like to do something called spotting the pocket. So spotting the pocket, I like to use this hammer tool, um, something we're working on actually to bring to the United States under the Walden Glove brand. Um, this is from XANAX Baseball Japan. Um, it's a glove hammer. You can use uh, the mallet also. Um, our Walden glove mallet works pretty good for it because it's got a similar type of uh, shape here. You can spot it here. Um, it creates like a indentation in the glove. So after I've been wearing it a little bit and just kind of lightly you know, messing with it, figuring out how it fits my hand, I can start to figure out, okay, when I close this down, if I look at the back side of the glove, you know, where, where do I feel like my pocket's gonna be? Well, I feel like it's gonna be about right here, the, the middle of the pocket. So, you know, if I bend this this way and bend this this way, I'm feeling like it's kind of around right here. So, below the web, um, right around down, down here. So, and I'll actually start hitting it in that spot uh, quite a bit and, and try to hit it only in that spot. Um, you can get it wet a little bit. I, I wouldn't say like dip it with water for a catcher's mitt. You want a catcher's mitt to stay pretty, pretty hard. And I think most of your break in, you actually want to happen from playing catch, but this'll, this'll allow you to play catch really well with it and uh, allow you to get it started really, really well.
I like to then start to shape it. And so I use the ball to shape it. Um, so I'll show you kind of how I do that. So right where my ball would be, right? So I like to go. And that allows you the big, I mean, the big point about this is it allows you to really start, you know, stretching on the glove without flat spotting it or putting a big crease in it, which I hate on catcher's mitts. I hate it when there's a big crease in there. And then I'll switch to the smaller ball and then keep on working it. So after I shape it, so we roll it with the ball, we start to shape our thumb pads here and our pads up here and start to get whatever shape we like. Then I like to work the break points and, and get the hinges built. And so I'm gonna put the hinges towards where I've spotted the pocket. And then I can come in on the break points. So my hinges are gonna be here and here. So I can just fold it in half on the hinge. And I'm not gonna fold like down the whole glove. I'm just gonna fold here. Cause it'll naturally get the hinges. I'm not gonna create a hard fold all the way. I'm just kind of really trying to get this. And I might even like angle this a little bit so that it's bending more down towards the bottom. Trying to get a little bit of an angle going. just by hand and get this thing started off pretty good uh, and then I'll just keep shaping it basically between the break points and that's pretty much it I mean it's not that much to do with the catcher's mitt that's the order I like to do it in uh, you may have your own order you may like to, some people like to get it wet and just go play catch. Like get, get the palm surface wet, only um, little warm water on the palm and just go play catch. Like that's another really good thing to do. You can do that after you've done the process that, that we've gone through. This is just how I like to do it. I know catchers are very specific on their each individual break-in process. If you have a break-in process or you have a, a way that you like to break in your catcher's mitt, let us know. I, I know there's a lot of different ways, you know, from working it through from the backside to getting it wet, to just playing catch, to hitting it with a baseball bat, to make a nice deep pocket. So let us know in the comments if you've got a different way, if you've got some information to share, hit us up. show you what I do after I played catch a little bit. Uh, first thing, take a buffing brush. Uh, this is a German horsehair buffing brush from the Black Forest of Germany. Uh, these are really good just to take off surface dirt. And if we sit here and actually buff it, it brings the oil content that's in the leather. So without putting more oil or conditioner in, I can just sit here and buff it and that abrasion and heat 
uh, on the leather is going to bring the oil up to the surface. It's going to give your glove some shine. It's also going to protect your glove because we have the oil up on the surface. You're not going to get so much dirt into the glove. So that's a really good way to keep your gloves clean is to buff them. Take off the dirt. Don't come and wipe some glove oil on there to take dirt off. Use a buffing brush, buy them on waldenglove.com. We have a whole line. Uh, so we've got this clean. After it was cleaned, I did a quick conditioner with our Walden Glove conditioner. This thing is designed to keep your glove from getting softer. It's simply to refresh the oil content in the glove and to give the leather a nice texture, a nice surface. It's not designed to continue to soften your glove. It was specifically designed not to do that. I'm a big believer in once I have my glove or my mitt game ready, I don't wanna keep messing with it. I don't want it to get softer and softer and softer and turn into a pancake. I want it to keep its shape and I want it to stay there as long as possible. So after I conditioned it, I've been rolling the glove. So rolling, 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 and I'm rolling it in a way where I'm softening this outer shell. I'm using my palm to push this U-shaped web and outer shell on the pocket. This is where I want it to bend, right here. I've got this kind of like a box shape, and I wanna keep making this U this U want to bend over the entire surface. So by rolling it, I'm making the whole surface softer. I'm also doing that down on the heel. So I put my hand behind my other hand and I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna keep bending it. So catcher's mitts are great because they're pretty bulletproof. You can just keep bending, keep getting it how you want it, and then go play catch. So keep shaping your glove up, keep it in really good shape, and keep playing catch, keep catching bullpens. The more you catch with this thing, the more it's gonna form to your hand, and the more that it's gonna just wanna close. Doesn't matter where the ball hits it, the ball's gonna find this pocket, and it's gonna snap. Um, that's basically it. I might throw the breaking ball. This is the larger ball. I'm using the larger one just to make a slightly bigger surface. It's not gonna make it deeper. And I'm mainly throwing it, I'm mainly throwing it to make it loud. So I want my catcher's mitt to be the loudest mitt on the field. I want it to just make the umpire think that every ball I catch is a strike, that I caught it clean, and I want my hitters to freak out, be like, hey, this pitcher's throwing gas. I want my pitcher to be pumped, and I want them to be like so stoked that I'm catching them and not some other catcher on the team because my glove pops. So these balls, they make your glove slap. I've gotten so many comments from customers saying, hey, I tried the balls and now my glove is the loudest glove on the field. So if you want a loud glove, especially for your catchers, this is the way to do it. Throw the breaking ball. You're gonna end up with an extremely loud mitt. Once I do that, I'm pretty much done. I'm just gonna keep catching bullpens and keep receiving as much as possible with the glove. When I put my glove in my bag, I'm putting a breaking ball in it and I'm letting it always sit like this. I'm never throwing this in flat. Um, if I don't have a ball, I can put a baseball in it. I like to actually put two baseballs in it, one here and one here, just so it can't fold in half like this. Um, if you don't have two, put it down closer to the heel so that it can stay in this shape. I might even wrap it if I have time and keep it wrapped in my bag. 
So I like to take care of my catcher's mitt probably more than any other glove just because the shape, the feel is so important on a catcher's mitt. It needs to stay the same for as long as possible. So that's catcher's mitt 101. We start it, we spot it, we build the pocket, we build the break points, we roll it out, and then we have to care for it. So taking care of our catcher's mitts are super important. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm stoked to share all this info with you. If you've got some comments, different opinions, a different way that you break in your catcher's mitt, let us know. We're all down to share information here and just keep it flowing.